Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to my tutorial on how to create crashing waves using the wave warp effect in After Effects to create a template, which you can then draw over in Flash. Let's take a look at an example which I've created myself. You can see here we've got these crashing waves and the style is drawn from Japanese depictions of water. So you've got these um, three different colors, white representing foam, light blue representing the kind of main part of the wave and the darker blue showing the shadows underneath the crest. So there we go, that's one that I've created. This is a technique that I've created using After Effects and Flash. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I created this one. Make sure you've watched my introduction to the wave warp effect before you do this tutorial. Otherwise, it's not gonna make any sense and you're gonna really struggle. Uh, it's also worth checking out my After Effects tutorials if you've not used After Effects before. Again, you're going to feel a bit boggled if you've never used After Effects before. Okay. So to get started, this is how I created this effect in After Effects. I've got three different shape layers. So let's look at these layers individually. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let's look at this pale blue one first. I'm going to solo that by clicking here. And you can see it's very similar to the shape I created in the first tutorial that I did. And you can see it doesn't move or anything because I've turned all the effects off. Now let's look at our second shape. That looks like this. This is the kind of light part of the water. That's the darker bit. And then finally, if I turn that off, we've got this kind of foam part, which is just a shape layer. Uh, with this kind of bigger shape here and uh, I've used a stroke with 220 pixels width so that that stroke lies on the outside of the shape rather than kind of fill so that's where the foam would normally lie it lies on the top of waves rather than all the way around them so there we go but there's no animation or movement in this at the moment so let's take a look at building up these effects one by one. Let's start at the bottom with this darker blue. For some reason I've called it pale blue main, so I'll call it dark. There we go. Um, just for clarity's sake, this dark blue here has the following effects applied to it. At the moment I've got them turned off, so I'm going to turn them on. So it's got a wave warp, and the wave type is circle because we want it to get a kind of circular wave, this kind of big sort of splashing circle falling down. The wave height is 570. The wave width is 859. The direction is 25 degrees. If I twirl that around, you can see you get different results by spinning it around. There we go. So I'll just undo that, leave it at 25. We want the wave to be traveling left, so we've got a minus value in the wave speed. So I, I want it to go quite slowly as well. So it's minus 0.8. The pinning is at the bottom edge. There's no phase. We've got the anti-aliasing set to high. And again, just like all the others we've looked at so far, I've got a frame rate set to eight using this posterized time effect. This is confusing you. Do make sure you've watched my wave warp introductory tutorial uh, where I explained how to do all this. So there we go. That's our first layer, our dark blue. Let's turn that off. Take a look at the lighter blue. So let's click on that and take a look at the effects. So on this blue layer, we've got not one, but two wave warp effects. The first one, let's take a look at it's exactly the same as our previous layer. It's a circle, 570 height, uh, 859 width, direction is 25, the wave speed is minus 
it's really, really important that you keep the wave speed the same on all of the layers and all of the instances of this effect. Otherwise, they're going to go out of sync and it'll look weird. So pinning is bottom edge and there's no phase. Got our anti-aliasing set to high. And we've also got this posterized time effect at the bottom of the stack. So posterized time is affecting both of these wave warp effects. So let's turn this wave warp off and just take a look at this second wave warp. You might be thinking, Andy, why have you got two instances of the same effect on one shape layer? Are you mad? <laughs> well, um, no, not in fact. To make this wave look a bit more kind of natural and interesting, I've used this smooth noise wave warp on top of the circle wave warp. Um, just to look at the, the smooth noise on its own, you can see it's fairly self-explanatory. It's like smooth, random noise. I've got a wave height of 192, wave width of 226. The direction is minus 353. The wave speed, really important to keep that exactly the same on all of them, minus 0.8. I've got a phase of 86. That's just because I thought that looked best. You can try fooling around with that yourself. And the anti-aliasing is set to high. So let's see what those two wave warps look like together. There we go. We get this really interesting effect where first off, we're applying this smooth noise. Then we're applying this wave warp with the circle. And then we're posterizing the time. So that's the order these effects are being processed in by After Effects. So what the smooth noise does, if I just turn it off, you can see it adds a bit of detail to the edge of this wave. It makes it look less bland and computery. It gives it a bit of kind of edge. And it's really important, again, that you have this wave speed the same. Otherwise, it's going to look strange. It's going to go out of sync. So let's take a look at both the dark blue and this one underneath it. And you can see we're getting all of this nice detail because of that smooth noise. It's making this kind of distinction between the darker area and the lighter area much more interesting. And we're getting this really interesting effect. Because we're using these wave warp effects, we're also losing a bit of information here. That's where when you import it into Flash, you can add that detail in. This is essentially just a template to help you create animation. So I'm sure you can use your imagination and fill that part in. This kind of thing happens when you have wave warp effects ramped up to really high values. So let's look at our last bit of information in this template. We've got this really big shape here that has a stroke applied to it. So there isn't any fill on this shape. It's just there for a stroke. And you can see it follows the same shape as our other waves, but I've kind of messed around with it to get it to fit into this space. That was something that I did just by tinkering around, essentially, to get it to look right. Um, the way I developed this particular example is just by fiddling around with things. So I didn't start off knowing what I was doing. I just kept messing around until I got the effect that I wanted. So just like with this blue layer, this stroke layer here has two wave warp effects applied to it. So let's look at this first wave warp effect. You can see that the wave type is a circle. Wave height is 570. The wave width is 859. Direction is 25. That all important wave speed has to be minus 0.8. Otherwise, it will go out of sync with the rest of the layers. Pinning is the bottom edge and the phase set to zero. I think if you mess around with the pinning, you'll see that you get different results. So there's, I've chosen bottom edge because this wave needs to be kind of weighted at the bottom. These options are sometimes a bit confusing and you just kind of have to mess around with them to see what results you get. In the anti-aliasing is set to high. We've got a posterized time set 
so that it's making everything eight frames a second. Again, you want that to be the same on all layers, otherwise you're gonna get your frame rates going out of sync. Uh, the second effect, again, we've got this smooth noise to give that nice kind of uh, natural effect to make that look much more interesting. You might be looking at that and thinking, wow, that's really, really cool for just one effect. It's getting that really nice, interesting kind of wave shape, the kind of crest of the wave, the foam. And it's be something that is quite challenging to draw and animate. Uh, you can see that these are kind of non-parallel lines. There are parts where it's much thinner and parts where it's much thicker. That's really good for smoke and water. It makes it look much more realistic and interesting. So that's about it. That's how I created this template. The next challenging thing to do is to find where it loops. So in all the other examples we've had, it's looped at kind of just before one second. But because we're using minus 0.8, it takes a little bit longer to loop because it's a bit slower. So I found that it was at one second and nine frames because at one second and 10 frames, the pitch is exactly the same as at the beginning. So you can get this nice kind of loop. There we go. And I exported this as a PNG sequence. Let's just look at it in flash. And we can see that what I've got is uh, this kind of chart of colors again. Let's zoom out a little bit more. I've got hock size waves sat at the top just to kind of inspire me. because that's what I sort of based this on. So let's take a look at our layers. We've got this wave, it's inside a symbol. So in order to kind of get at the frames, we'll have to take a look at that by double clicking on it. This is a graphic symbol. And you can see that I've traced over my After Effects template there. That's on this guide. So let's just turn all of these off and you can see that it's sat there on the guide. I haven't traced over this. I thought it would be easier just to draw over it using my Wacom tablet. So I've done that on a frame by frame basis. So I've got one layer with all the kind of wave drawing on it. I've drawn over that template. I've got another layer where I've drawn some extra bits of white. So let's just take a look at that on its own. Turn it off outline mode. You can see these are all just extra little bits of detail to make it look more interesting. And on this top layer here, I've done some extra little bits of detail. So I'll put these on separate layers just so I can have a bit more control over them and separate them from everything else. I've got a little bit of foam here. And these extra layers are how you make this wave look a bit more natural and interesting and give it a bit more variety. So you can see there's the odd bit of foam that I've drawn here that kind of flies off the top. And I've drawn in these extra bits of wave. I think I was looking at my inspirational picture up here and looking at all these kind of strands of foam that run through and these extra bits of foam that pop off the top just to get that kind of effect that I wanted. So there we go. That's how to create a Hokusai style wave using the wave warp effect in After Effects combined with drawing in Flash. So. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson where we're going to look at some more watery wave warp effects. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Colouring and Activity Book and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike and are well worth checking out.